Hello and welcome to my review of the Mechanicum Knight Moirax with Volkite View Glare and Gigi's Siege Claw from Forge World. Now one of these models will cost you £37 and it comes in two flavours. This Moirax with the Volkite weapon and the claw or the other variant with the dual lightning locks. You do have an option of purchasing the weapons separately if you so wish for £13 each. You can pick up the Graviton Pulsar or the very very lethal uh, conversion beam cannon and you can run them in a mix and match of all different flavours and have two of the same and so on and so on. The only downside with these Moirats kits is you can't get them just on their own. What I mean, you can't get the armour plates just on their own, so you can't just pick them up without the weapon options and then um, for a discounted price and then buy the weapon options later on. But I mean, let's face it, you know, if you add two weapons there, that would normally be £26. You're getting the Moirax for £11, which is all of the resin pieces, including two different heads, the different armour panels for the shoulder pauldrons, the rear panel, the front groin panel, and the leg armour pieces. At first, you may look at one of these and think, oh, crikey, £37 is a lot compared to the plastic kit, which is only eight pounds more, uh, even less if you use a discount um, with my Element Games affiliate link down below. You save yourself 20%. But that being said, this unit you can use in both Horus Heresy and 40K, which is something you can't say about the current Armagers, Warglaives and the Helverins. Where you can find the rules for the 40K and the Horus Heresy, they're conveniently placed on um, Forge World's website. So, let's have a look at the kit. Uh, we'll start off with the instruction manual, like we did in the unboxing. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, you really feel like you're getting your money's worth with this one. Um, the booklet is a nice big A4 sheet. Um, it's all colour. Um, it gives you full instructions. Uh, for both the plastic and resin pieces and it's very clearly differentiates between uh, said, said parts which is uh, in stark contrast to the um, recent Styrix model that I um, picked up where they just you know copied and pasted um, some of the uh, plastic instructions into the A4 black and white sheets of paper. Um, you know, those kits are not cheap. They're £130. This one's 37 and it's coming with this one of these full colour instruction guides. Um, like I say, if you had one of these as your first 412 model, I know it's it's a combination kit of uh, resin and plastic. You're going to have a lot of fun and uh, it's, a, it's a great base, uh, along with a Contemptor Dreadnought, but um, yeah, <laughs> only a couple Contemptors have instructions like this. So yeah, it all goes together very, very well. I didn't have any issues whatsoever um, other than kind of, <laughs> you know, jumbling up the uh, cables for the head right at the end, but oh well. It comes with two different heads, the kind of Mechanicum type head skull thing and your typical uh, knight head. Um, as I say, the weapon options you get is the uh, GG's Siege Claw and also uh, the Volkite View Glare. Um, good choices, you know, you can pick up, I'm going to have two close combat knights, uh, I'm going to have two close combat Moirax knights um, in the force. Uh, this one with the Volkite and the other one with the Graviton. You'll see that in a, uh, a later um, video. And therefore, they've got the claw, they've got a single weapon. The others will all have, um, you know, weapons of the same type. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it went together pretty well. Not really any issues. Um, you don't have to glue this uh, carapace on. You can leave it off and you can rotate it. You can magnetise it. Speaking of which, you can magnetise the weapons. They'll be straight easy. You just have to put a magnet in there and magnetise the the shoulders. All the other weapons come with extra shoulder parts as well, just in case. Um, so it's very, very straightforward and easy to magnetise. I haven't magnetised mine, but they are not glued right now, so I can pop them off and spray them and uh, and glue them. Um, again, it's up to you, personal choice, if you want to leave all the armour panels off and things. Um, it will make it easier to uh, paint later on. Um, but that's the pose I've gone for about to um, blast something 
um, with that Volkite weapon. But uh, yeah, plenty of detail everywhere. Um, you know, if you see my unboxing, you get to see the first hand um, view of uh, the detail. Uh, I do like it with this head as well. Um, but yeah, you can see the resin parts, which are different compared to the uh, the, the usual one. Um, I know it's a bit early for size comparisons, but what the hell? But what the hey? Um, here is the normal armature. Um, there, you know, similar kind of size, um, but uh, just goes to show you that you know how much more armor the um, Morax has uh, compared to um, this uh, Warglaive. But so yeah, that's where they kind of stack up. This this leads me nicely into the size comparisons, to be fair. Um, this review is going to be a little bit longer because I have to go through all the uh, Horus Heresy. Compared to a uh, Questorus Knight, I haven't glued on the uh, Volkite weapon because I've had a bit of an issue with, with it. Um, but that's where it stands next to this one. I've recently just completed this uh, this one. So yeah, you can just imagine all the, you can just imagine all the armages and Moraxes um, dotting about this. And then comparing it to a Sarastas size knight, um, yeah, that's that's where it stands up next to one, um, almost at the hips of one of the the tallest knights. There, there we go. And then next to the usual size comparisons, I always like to make. We've got Primaris on the right, we have Sly Marbo uh, on the left, and we have a normal Space Marine in the middle. So. You know, if you're going against Primaris or whatnot, because you can use these in 40k, um, you know, it's going to dwarf a lot of things. And th these are the smallest knights, you see. Um, so this is going to be probably a similar height to your Redemptor Dreadnought. Maybe a little bit smaller, definitely a lot thinner. Um, but yeah, that's just a little um, example of where these small knights um hold up. Now, there was a question about um, how uh, knights, operatives, pilots, whoever, um, are able to get in here. My theory is that the armor plating here um, slides up and then you can just jump on in. And it's the same for both the Asterius and for this one. It's noticed that there's, it's, it's layered plates. So it can go up one and then up again, and then you're straight in. Um, I don't know how much more efficient that is uh, compared to usual hatches, um, but uh, but there we go. I think I've uh, solved that. And now we've got to my part of the review where I will go through all of the rules for the Moirax with the Volkite view glare and the GG's Siege Claw. Um, we'll start off with the Horus Heresy rules, which you can pick up on the Forge World website as a like a little PDF file. One of these will cost you 185 points. The weapon skill is four plus ballistic skill. The weapon skill is four, ballistic skill is four. Strength seven, front and side armor a 12, rear 11, initiative four, two attacks and four hull points. It's a Mechanicum Knight Moirax. It's a vehicle, a walker. It's got the Volkite view glare and the GG's siege claw with built in, with an inbuilt rad cleanser, ionic flare field, a construct shield, rad furnace, and ocular augmetics. Questorus Knight Moirax Talon may be taken as a non compulsory troops choice in a Questorus Knight Crusade detachment and is subject to the household rank special rule, but must select the Scion Amuntar household rank. A Questorus Knight Moirax Talon may alternatively be taken as a heavy support choice in any Mechanicum detachment. However, if taken in this way, the unit you loses the household rank special rule. So special rules, it's got the Morax Talon, Household Rank, Questorus Knight Crusade Detachment only, uh, Briuso Protocol and Move Through Cover. This unit may take up to three additional Mechanicum Knight Morax. So you can run these in a group of four for 155 points each. Any Mechanicum Knight Morax may exchange its Volkite View Glare for one of the following weapons. So you've got the Armager Conversion Beam Cannon for 10 points, the GG's Siege Claw with built-in Rad Cleanser for free, the Lightning Lock for 5 points, Graviton Pulsar for 10 points, and any Mechanicum Knight Morax may exchange its GG's Siege Claw with, built, with inbuilt Rad Cleanser for one of the following weapons. Volkite View Glare, Lightning Lock, Graviton Pulsar. So there you go, you can pretty much have two of each weapon, except for the Beam Cannon. Important to note that. You can do that in 40k though. The Mechanicum Knight Morax Wargear. So the 
so it includes an ionic flare field, um, which gives it a five plus and vulnerable save against all shooting attacks, but grants no benefits against close combat attacks. In addition, the strength of any shooting attack made against a model equipped with this item, which has the blast or template rules, are reduced by minus one. Construct shield, model with construct shield has a number of expendable shields listed in its profile. Moraxes have two. Uh, construct shields have an armor value of 11. A glancing or penetrating hit scored against, or any hit from a destroyer weapon scored against the construct shield causes it to collapse. Further hits strike the model instead. Invulnerable saves cannot be taken against hits sustained by a construct shield, and construct shields cannot be restored by any means. So it's, it's almost like it's got a void shield. That's, that's the thing right here. So it's got a number of uh, special rules. So the Grusso protocol, when within 12 inches of a friendly Siege Automata, War Construct, Ordinatus or Questorus Knight, which is the target of a charge move, a Mechanicum Knight Morax that is not locked into combat may, take, may make a single shooting attack against the charging unit if it is in range, as if the attack were made during the shooting phase. This attack is made immediately after a charge is declared before the charging unit is moved. Morax Talon, when first deployed on the battlefield, uh, the knights in a talon must be played within must be placed within six inches of each other. Afterwards, they are not treated as a vehicle squadron but operate independently as individual units for the purposes of taking any actions, as well as for determining victory points in missions, which make use of victory points for destroying units. Household rank: a Mechanicum Knight Moirax talon must select the Scion Amantar household rank when taken as part of a Questorus Knight Crusade detachment and cannot use the other household ranks presented in the Questorus Knight Crusade army list. Troops rank, Scion Amantar, it's free. Amantar, a unit of Scions Amantar may not be held in reserve and must be deployed further than six inches from a friendly Questorus Knight if this is possible. Okay, so that's all the main rules and things. A fair amount of rules um, for this unit. And then you've got the weapon rules as well. So the GG Siege Claw is a strength, is a melee weapon, and its strength is times two AP2 melee wrecker. Rad Cleanser is a template weapon, strength two AP5, but it's Assault One, Fleshbane, and Rad Phage. Lightning Locks, which I'll go on to uh, in the uh, Lightning Lock Moirax um, review. It's a 36 inch range, strength six AP3, heavy one, rending, shred, and blast three inches. Graviton Pulsar, it's a range of 24 inches, they don't have a strength, the AP is 4, but they are heavy to blast 3 inches, con con concussive, Graviton Pulse and Haywire. The Volkite View Glare, which is what this one's got, is a range 36 inch, strength 6, AP 4, but it is heavy 5 and deflagrate. The Armager Conversion Beam Cannon, you can see why you can only take one now, um, up to 18 inches, it's a strength 6, no AP, heavy 1, blast 3 inches. 18 to 42 inches, it's strength 8, AP4 and a heavy one blast three inches and then between 42 inches and 72 inches it's a whopping strength 10 AP1 and a heavy one blast three inches. So there you go that's all of the Horus Heresy rules as you can tell a lot of rules there to, to go over and to cover. Um, the rules uh, for the 40k Moira I will be taking from the uh, Warhammer 40,000 Imperial Armor Compendium book. So in that book, uh, the Knight Moirax is just a Knight Moirax with all of the weapon options listed. Uh, it is a power points cost of an eight and a points cost of 155 points. All of the weapons you don't need to spend any more points on, but the Moirax Conversion Beam Cannon is an extra 10 points per weapon. So if you're gonna run two of them, it's gonna cost you 175 points just for one single Knight Morax with two beam cannons. Because it's a vehicle, it's one of these units whereby uh, the number of wounds remaining affects it, the rest of its start line. So if it's got between, so if it, so it starts off with 12 wounds and if it's got seven or more, its movement speed is 12 inches, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength 6, toughness 7, 4 attacks, leadership 8, and a save of 3+. Plus. For between 4 and 6 wounds, its movement drops to 10 inches, and its weapon skill and ballistic skill bot drop 4+. Plus. When it only has between 1 to 3 wounds, its movement speed drops to 8 inches, and the weapon skill and ballistic skill both drop to 5+. Plus. If this unit contains 2 models, it has a power rating of 16. If the unit contains 3 models, it has a power rating of 24. Every model is equipped with Rad Cleanser, Siege Claw, and Volkite View Glare. Any number of models can each have their Volkite View Glare replaced with one of the following. One Siege Claw, one Rad Cleanser, one Graviton Pulsar, Pulsar one Lightning Lock, one Morax Conversion Beam Cannon, 
Any number of models can have their Siegeclaw and Rad Cleanser replaced with one of the following, one Graviton Pulsar, one Lightning Lock, one Moirax Conversion Beam Cannon, and one Volkite View Claire. I'll just run through the weapons. So the Graviton Pulsar is a range 24 inch, heavy D6, strength 6, AP minus 3, damage 2, and it's a blast. Each time an attack made with this weapon is allocated to a model with a save characteristic of 3 plus or better, that attack has a damage characteristic of 3. So range 36 inch, heavy 6, strength 6, AP minus 2, damage 1, and each time an attack is made with this weapon, an unmodified hit roll of a 6 scores 2 additional hits. That's why they're so good, because you're getting straight up 6 shots and with the potential of causing even more hits. The Morax Conversion Beam Cannon. Not as deadly as its Horus Heresy counterpart, but still pretty decent. Um, you've got a short range, which is 0 to 18 inches, heavy D3, strength 6, AP 0, damage 2, blast. You've got a medium range, 18 inch to 42 inch, heavy D3, strength 8, AP minus 1, and damage 3, and blast. And then long range is 42 to 72 inches, heavy D3, strength 10, AP is only minus 2, but the damage is 4, and it's blast. The Rad Cleanser, which they've got if you've got the Siege Claw, it's a 9 inch, assault D6, Strength 2, AP 0, damage 3, but each time an attack is made, it automatically hits the target, and on two pluses, the wound is always successful unless the target is a vehicle or titanic unit. The Volkite View Glare, then. It's a 36-inch range, heavy 5, strength 6, AP minus 1, damage 2, but every unmodified wound roll of 6 inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage. So that's pretty good. So it's got five st shots straight away, and on sixes you're getting those mortal wounds. The Siege Claw is a melee weapon, strength times two, so that'll be 12, AP minus three, damage D6, and you have to subtract one from your hit roll. But if you're attacking a vehicle or Titanic, you add two to the damage characteristic. So yeah, potentially you could get damage eight. Abilities, Iron Shield. That will give you a five plus invulnerable against ranged weapons. Squadron. You can take them in, in groups, uh, but they have to be spaced apart. Explodes, when this model is destroyed, roll 1d6 before removing it from play. On a 6 it explodes, and each unit within 6 inches suffers d3 mortal wounds. Protection protocols, whilst this model is within 6 inches of any friendly household titanic models, it can perform heroic interventions as if it were a character. This model is eligible to perform a heroic intervention if it is within 6 inches horizontally and 5 inches vertically of any enemy unit. Each time this model makes a heroic intervention move, it can move up to 6 inches instead of 3 inches. All other rules for heroic interventions still apply. That's pretty cool. means it can just protect other Titan models. Keywords, Imperium, Imperial Knights, Questor, Allegiance, Household, Vehicle, Armager Class, Knight, Moirax. So there you go, that is the Moirax in a nutshell. Um, loads of rules there, a lot to digest, and this is just the first review of uh, the Imperial Knights. I know I did a review of the um, Chaos Knight, but I didn't, but there aren't really any rules for the Chaos Knight in the Horus Heresy, which is a bit of a shame, and I wish there were. But still, this is the first one for Imperial Knights. Um, there will be more Armager class unboxings and reviews coming up over the next uh, week. Then we'll move on to Questoris, Castellan, Serastus, and finally, a Castus-sized Knights. And the comparisons with Titans will get bigger and bigger. What do you guys think of this Knight Morax? I think it's a very enjoyable kit. It is a bit pricey, but I do think that uh, it's worth it. Please do put your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.